All right, hi, I'm Brad Neal, and let's talk about some Chem 150. Um, so I think when we left off in our discussions, we had described what the shape of orbitals had come from, and it was the the three quantum numbers um, plus the fourth, the uh, spin, the electron spin quantum number. The nice thing about that was it gave us these shapes that we could see here on the screen um, where we had the S, the P, the D, and the F orbitals. And we talked a little bit about nodes and all that jazz. So something that might come to your mind would be which one of these is more energetic? Because we talked about the principal quantum number N giving us the idea of energy. Um, so it's time to figure out, okay, on an energy diagram, how do all of these uh, different orbitals relate to one another? So what you're seeing is a, an orbital, an energy orbital diagram um, down here at the very bottom. Uh, this is pretty much like the simulation that we showed you at the very end of all those simulation videos. Um, so we've got energy increasing as we go up and we've got our various orbitals. So if we have an atom that only has one electron in it, so if we have hydrogen or we have helium in a plus one state or lithium in a plus two state, all of those are one electron systems. Um, the punchline is any orbital that has the same value of n, the same principal quantum number, is going to have the same energy. So for 1s, there's really only one orbital that you can have when you have principal quantum number of 1, and that's going to be an s orbital. But if you have a principal quantum number of 2, you can have a 2s and a 2p. For a one electron system, the 2s and the 2p orbitals will have the exact same energy. So you're not going to be able to differentiate this s orbital from this p orbital. There's a term that we use for that, and we call it degeneracy. We would say that these orbitals, the 2s and the 2p orbitals, are degenerate. Now we've got three individual 2p orbitals within that 2p subshell. So this one box, two box, three box thing. All three of these are degenerate with each other as well. Um, we talked about um, the p orbitals have all the same uh, quantum numbers, and it's really just that angular momentum, um, the m sub l quantum number, that is giving us the difference um, in the orientation in space with those. Yep. What happens if you have a multi-electron system like every other atom on the periodic table besides hydrogen? Well, suddenly now that degeneracy breaks um, and we have this general rule to go by. So electrons that have uh, an N sub, or like a principal quantum number of N, and it's the same principal quantum number, we would normally say that the S subshell gets filled and is in lower in energy before the p which is lower in energy than the d which is lower in energy than the f so if we take a look at our diagram again the 1s is really boring because there's only the one kind of orbital but for the two principal quantum number two we have a 2s and we have 2p now the s and the p subshells are no longer degenerate um and this has to deal with how close the electron is to the nucleus. Um, it has to deal with uh, the number of electrons that we actually have in a system. And so then we have uh, pairing energies and we have repulsion energies. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, but the big takeaway that I want you to know is what we've got on the screen here. That the if you have a 2s and a 2p, subshells, the 2s will be lower energy than the 2p. This holds true if we go up to the 3. So 3s is lower in energy than 3p is lower in energy than 3d. Now you might be looking over here and say, yeah, the 3d is higher in energy than the 3p, but the 4s is lower in energy than the 3d. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely true. 
the thing is though uh, for this guidance that we're giving you here we're assuming that we're holding the principal quantum number n the same so the comparing 4s to 3d this relationship up here doesn't work um, but the 4s 4p 4d 4f relationship does work so for this kind of relationship we have to be holding that principal quantum number the same now I've got this little self-test uh, written up here. So we have uh, this example of 3S is less energy than the energy of the 3P, less energy than the energy of the 3D. Why didn't we write out 3F? So I'm gonna give you a second here to think about why we didn't write out 3F before we talk about it. All right, you got any thoughts on why we didn't write out 3F? Because in the next category, there isn't a 3F? Yeah, there is no 3F orbital. So let's show a good example of how that, or what we mean by that. All right, so if we have N equals 3, Based off of our rules, L could equal maximum of two, or it could equal one, or it could equal zero. And based off of previous lectures, our letter designations are S, P, and D. We would, in order to have an F, we have to have L equal three. We can't have that if n is equal to 3. So you th physically cannot have an 3f orbital. Yep, that's absolutely right. Does that make sense writing that out? Yes. Cool. Any questions? Nope. All right. 